I have been stalked for over a decade, and I'm working very hard to change stalking law. That is how NCIS star actress Polly Perrette introduced herself on the most recent episode of the CBS News program, 48 Hours, in a two-part, two-hour special that focused on a group of women who had been allegedly terrorized by stalkers, Perrette, with the assistance of CBS News, has just established herself as the poster child for a drive to enhance stalking laws in the United States. Perrette is shown taking other alleged victims under her wing, establishing a support group and encouraging these women to come forward with the details of their stories in order to raise public awareness and to garner the attention of lawmakers. To be fair, the issue is completely legit. Stalking, a crime in which both men and women can be victims, is a true nightmare. It's difficult, if not impossible, to prevent. Our civil liberties and due process standards make law enforcement efforts difficult, especially given that so much of what the stalkers do, like following people, contacting them on social media, sending emails, posting letters, and making less than explicit threats, are not generally illegal unless suspects are ordered away from such behavior with restraining orders that are equally difficult to enforce. So, it's easy to understand Perrette's efforts, especially given that she claims to have been stalked for over 10 years. Indeed, I'd be tempted to throw support behind what she's doing if it weren't such a gendered model and if I did not know Perrette to be such a devious liar who is nothing at all like she presents herself in public. If you've been a reader in recent years of websites like A Voice for Men and GotNews.com, you know there's a very dark underbelly to Perrette's public persona and a mountain of evidence that it is she, in fact, who is a highly skilled and efficient stalker who's been using restraining order laws to terrorize her ex-husband, Francis Shivers, since their divorce some 13 years ago. There are links in the low bar to archives from both sites and to a New York Post article with the same basic information on Perrette. There is a great amount of evidence now on the record that sheds light on Perrette as an unequivocal liar, perjurer, and false accuser that used the legal system to frame and terrorize her ex-husband. The evidence here points to a Pauli Perrette that used the same exact modus operandi for stalking that she now claims to be seeking legislation to prevent. According to Shivers, she obtained a temporary restraining order in the couple's divorce, then used social media to track him and his new wife so that she could intercept them at a restaurant, putting him in violation of the restraining order. At that point, she had him arrested, and he was subsequently incarcerated for five months. This is all part of a much larger story that would take some time to digest, so I'm taking the time here to do this talk in order to give it to you in a nutshell and to explain, for those who might need it, why it's so important. It begins prior to the Perrette Shivers divorce, with Perrette authoring an outline for a screenplay titled Star Crazy. It's the story of a 20-year-old woman, a sugar-sweet but sinister press darling who meets a man whom she sees as weak and vulnerable and who has a drinking problem. She becomes furious when he rejects her sexually. So she stalks him, schmoozes police, and gets a restraining order against him. She later gives a huge donation to charity and ends up on television and a magazine cover basking in the attention. If you're wondering how I came up with all the adjectives to describe these two characters in Perrette's screenplay... It was from Perrette herself. In the low bar, I have linked you to a digital copy of it in her handwriting. She confirmed that the work is hers in a court hearing after being confronted by Mr. Shiver's attorney. That came after 10 years of denials of the script's existence, including denials she issued under oath. Perrette's reaction to being asked about the script is short but revealing. So I'll play it for you here. Here's one of the scripts uh, called Star Crazy. Yeah. Mm 
How would you know that? Please, it's not her deposition. <laughs> now, according to Shivers, when the marriage deteriorated to the point of a divorce, Perrette waved the star-crazy outline that she was so caught off guard about in court in his face and told him that if she didn't get what she wanted, that the star-crazy story would happen to him. Now, admittedly, all we have is Shiver's word about that. But the following 13 years appear to corroborate that if Perrette did make that threat, that she followed through with it with complete dedication and intent. And now we appear to be nearing the epilogue of Perrette's story, where she becomes the heroine, the darling of the public eye, even as she stands on the shoulders of real victims. The 48 Hours episode opens with the tragic story of singer Christina Grimmie, who was gunned down by a stalker after one of her performances. Perrette laments the killing as the program segues into her efforts to gather and encourage a small group of women to take the risk of coming forward and speaking publicly with the details about how being stalked has caused trauma and turmoil in their lives. She encouraged and lauds these women for speaking out, for naming their alleged stalkers, and then informs 40 Hours that she won't talk about her alleged decade-long stalking because she's, and I quote directly from the show here, unwilling to give her tormentor the attention she says he craves. Polly doesn't want to go into detail about him or her case, but says he came close to destroying her. Sorry, but what the hell? Perret is selling herself as the poster child for stalking victims but doesn't want to divulge details about the alleged stalking? And the producers of 48 Hours gave a pass on that? Maybe if they asked questions, they would have to explain some stuff that would interfere with an otherwise perfect damsel scenario. Like why her stalker craves media coverage for his stalking, maybe? The other stalkers profiled on the show who assumedly pose increased risk to the victims because they went public. Perrette's stalker will instead be pleased with the attention? This makes me wonder if the show's producers ever question anything about Perrette's story at all before going to air with this, including the fact that she doesn't even have a story, just an unsubstantiated claim that she is the decades-long victim of a stalker. Perhaps if they had asked questions and gotten answers, they would have discovered that Frances Shivers is an interesting contrast compared to other alleged stalkers according to information from experts that was presented on the show. They portrayed stalkers as people who are socially withdrawn, isolated, and lacking in people skills. They are people who often imagine a relationship with a victim that does not exist or at best as spurned lovers who cannot accept that the relationship is over. Shivers cut off all contact with Perrette after filing for divorce in 2004. He remarried years ago to a successful model and writer. He's been elected to his local city council even after all the allegations from Perrette and enjoys immense local popularity. In the area where he lives and works, he's been nicknamed the mayor. This is the man that Polly Perrette is alleging has stalked her for over 10 years, someone that doesn't fit any element of a stalker's psychological profile. Despite all the allegations made by Perrette over the last 13 years, she has never produced a shred of evidence that the man has ever done anything wrong other than show up at a restaurant where she knew he would be from obsessively following his social media accounts. 13 years without a single email, a single documented threat, a single note, or a single act of violence. The other women on 48 Hours program provided volumes of documentation to support their claims. They named names and took the possible risk that comes with that, evidently at Perrette's urging. From Perrette, nothing. No evidence, no corroboration, no provable facts, just the word, of the star-crazy author that she is terrified to open her email, an email that Frances Shivers has not written in more than a decade. Is there anyone at CBS News that even stopped to wonder just who it is in the Perrette-Shivers relationship 
that was finding it impossible to let go. Overall, the CBS presentation was pretty effective. They spent a lot of time on the case of a schizophrenic stalker who was scary and likely dangerous by anyone's standards and intermingled that with abundant mood shots of Perrette sitting in the shadows, peeking apprehensively out the window, looking suitably frightened of the unnamed, unsourced, and unproven stalker of 10-plus years. There is no doubt that stalking is a crime that runs into challenging conflict with civil liberties that Americans typically embrace. Still, it seems ironic that what may now be unfolding in the halls of our governance, since Perrette is now reportedly working with California Congressman Adam Schiff on changing stalking laws, is that the criminal side of this problem is now taking a highly visible public role in creating laws that she can exploit to continue her vendetta against her ex-husband. Some questions about this need to be asked. I wouldn't bother asking Congressman Schiff. I don't know him, but if he's like most politicians, he couldn't care less whether Polly Perrette is an innocent victim of an evil man or if she, like the protagonist of her star-crazy story, is a sinister manipulator gaining fame and fortune while committing the very treachery she is purporting to remedy. I think that CBS News is equally a probable dead end in the question department. My experience with news media is similar to that of politicians. They have an agenda, and Polly Perrette fits it quite well, truth be damned. Perhaps it's best to share those questions with my audience, hoping that when they see this God-forsaken scam of a social awareness agenda furthered in the days ahead, they can add to the conversation with some questioning of their own. By the way, I did contact Francis Shivers for his comments. I suppose, understandably, that he was hesitant to add much in the way of commentary on the matter. He remains on a restraining order. He did share with me, though, that the night that the 48 Hours episode aired, he was en route to St. Felix, Hollywood, where he had checked into on social media the previous two nights, when he got a phone call informing him that he better not come that night. Pauly Perrette was already there waiting for him. On that note, I want to ask the following, which despite my concerns, I am going to forward to Congressman Schiff and to CBS News. I will even provide them the answers for all the good I expect it will do. The answers, by the way, can be confirmed in the provided links on the entire affair. 1. Why wasn't it mentioned that Polly Perrette has admitted under oath to writing a screenplay called Star Crazy about a female TV star that uses restraining orders as a method of stalking and false accusations as a method of publicizing her acting career? And how many of the other victims had written such ideas? Answer, none. Only Polly Perrette. Two. How many of the other victims have had their alleged stalker voluntarily offer to sign a mutual stay-away order, if only they did too, but refused to agree to the stay-away from their alleged stalkers and instead spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to maintain one-way restraining orders? Answer, none. Only Pauli Perrette. Three, how many of the other victims have such severe enough mental illness that they have, according to friends, been confined to a psychiatric ward and straitjacketed with self-inflicted knife wounds? Answer, none. Only Polly Perrette. Four, how many of the other victims have had a Los Angeles Superior Court judge state on the record that they are not being stalked and that the person they are claiming is stalking them is not a stalker? Answer, none. Only Polly Perrette. And finally, number five. How many of the other victims on the show have hired a private investigator who proudly and publicly advertises that he helps his clients fabricate false accusations against innocent men? Answer, only one. Polly Perrette. And for those of you who need to see this to believe it, here's a short clip of John Nazarian the private investigator employed by Polly Perrette during her court battles with Francis Shivers. I've counseled women and a few men on how to get the other side thrown out of the house. 
How hard is that to do? If you follow my instructions, easy. As always, I'd like to thank you all for listening tonight and for supporting this channel. If you would like to learn more about the entire Polly Perrette Francis Shivers story, please visit paulieslaw.org. That's P-A-U-L-E-Y-S-L-A-W dot org. New website that will be maintained, bringing this story to the public in the days ahead. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.